on our final day in South Carolina, at least for now, we decided to head down south of Myrtle Beach to uh, Polly's Island and Litchfield and Garden City. Uh, Polly's Island is just a, a really nice place. Uh, lots of big vacation homes and the salt marsh. It's just really pretty. And it always reminds me, every time I go down there, it always reminds me of one of my very favorite uh, books, which is Prince of Tides by Pat Conroy. And uh, that book, if you haven't read it, or the movie by the same name, it's set in the South Carolina Low Country. <clears throat> and Conroy is really good at just painting a very vivid visual picture with words. So if you haven't read the book, hope you'd enjoy it. Hi, I'm Warren. And I'm Maureen. And this is Bo. The pandemic and some personal health issues caused us to refocus on what's really important. So with our Airstream Claire Marshall, we embraced a new way of life, full-time RV living. Come along and share our adventures as we travel hither and yon across this great country. We'll find new places, meet new people, and fall in love all over again. If you're in the Garden City area and you're looking for a good place to eat, you really ought to consider Gulfstream Cafe. Uh, we came here with our Airstream group for dinner one night, and it was just fantastic. It's right on the intercoastal waterway, so you have wonderful sunsets. Uh, the food is just outstanding. Uh, the setting, the, the, the atmosphere is great. So if you're in this area and you're looking for a, a, a good place for some good eats, check out Gulfstream Cafe. Headed out of Ocean Lakes this morning, headed up to Charlotte, North Carolina, to uh, be there to visit family for the holidays. Uh, it's always bittersweet leaving Ocean Lakes. We love coming here, but we have other adventures ahead of us. And uh, the next time we'll be here will be for the uh, November Airstream Rally next fall. So we're, we look forward to visiting Ocean Lakes once again. Most of you know, uh, we don't have our tow set up fixed just yet for the Jeep, uh, so we drive separately on travel days, and uh, I honestly kind of, I kind of like that right now. There's a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, if we're traveling and I need to get over into a lane, Maureen can pop out into the, uh, to the lane and, and make sure I can get over. Uh, it's helpful when we're coming into a campground, she can kind of scout ahead for uh, limb, tree limbs, and that sort of thing. <laughs> but the other and kind of surprising hidden uh, benefit is it uh, gives us a couple of hours of me time, of uh, individual me time. And that's one of the things that's been a little bit surprising about full time and is how little time uh, you get to yourself. And gives me a chance to kind of think kind of plan, uh, uh, mull over some things, um, which route we're going to take going south, all different kinds of things. But And then Maureen gives her a chance to, to drive on her own, listen to the music she wants, but poor Bo has to listen to the mamas and the papas and some really questionable music choices, but other than that, it's all good. We needed to refuel, so we wanted to take advantage of the cheaper fuel in South Carolina. It's quite a quite a little bit cheaper than refueling in North Carolina would be. And uh, we chose to refuel at this Petro in Florence, South Carolina. And the reason for that is because it's part of the uh, TSD Logistics Discount Program. <clears throat> um, we really enjoy this program. Basically, the way it works is you sign up with TSD Logistics and they are a trucking company and they allow you to buy fuel at their fleet price um, and in exchange for that you pay them 10 percent of the difference between full retail and the discounted price so basically you're getting 90 percent of the discount that they receive as a fleet and then the benefit for them is uh, the more RVers that are using their program, the more fuel that uh, is being bought for their fleet, therefore they can negotiate lower and lower rates. 
So it's a really good program. I'd encourage you to look into it because it saves us quite a bit of money. We're going to try to get into the Blue Beacon over here and get a truck wash, but you can see the line and uh, it's just a little too busy. We got to get on the road. Right here is where our trip took a little bit of a side turn. We had originally planned to stay on the interstate to Columbia then go take I-77 north toward Charlotte. We got off to refuel the Jeep at a, at a pilot. And then when we went to exit the pilot, we would have had to cross four lanes of really heavy traffic to get back onto the interstate. So I made the decision, well, let's just go right because that the GPS is saying that's taking the way we want to go anyway thinking that it would you know be a short detour and we'd be back on the interstate instead it was over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go through doc hollywood country the backwoods of south carolina all the way to fort mill which was i mean it was a nice ride uh pretty countryside all that sort of stuff the problem was this time of year it gets dark pretty early running a little bit late uh, to get to the Harvest Host location where we were going to be staying that night. So I was kind of chasing daylight, and uh, but we made it okay, and we made it to our Harvest Host location. It was a little stressful getting in there because, uh, as you can see from the map, you have to drive through this residential neighborhood to get to the place where you turn down into the equestrian center. So if you do come to this harvest host and you turn down into a neighborhood and you see houses, don't think you're in the wrong place because that's actually, you're, you're right on track. This is our harvest host for the evening. Linwood Farms Equestrian Center in Fort Mill. Maureen loves the uh, Shetland ponies there. We're just getting checked in. We'll give you a tour a little bit later. interacted with horses before and this is Scout he's eaten <laughs> and you are beautiful too um, I'm a city mouse Warren's a country mouse <laughs> so back to eating <laughs> and um, wanted to also meet Elijah he is beautiful and I'm told he's very friendly obviously um, I'm new at this so the interaction I've had with horses is watching Yellowstone so, you are just gorgeous. This Harvest Host location was going to be our very first opportunity to boondock with our new rig, or new to us rig. And one thing that's a little unusual about it is that the previous owner had uh, replaced the gas electric refrigerator with an all electric refrigerator. And that comes with some pluses and minuses. The big plus is it eliminates. Uh, the fire hazard that uh, some RVs have had with propane powered uh, refrigerators. <clears throat> the bad news is that it only runs on 110 power and uh, so when we were doing our walk through with the rig uh, she went to great pains to, to show us that you know uh, there was an additional inverter installed on the on the RV and that the refrigerator would run off of it and if you can decipher these notes, uh, you're a better engineer than I am. But we tried every possible permutation and combination to try to get this refrigerator to work off of the inverter. But it just absolutely would not. The good news, good news, is that we already had and have had on board for a while a, uh, a small a portable freezer in the refrigerator unit, it'll run off a of 12 volt or it'll run off a of 110. 
and it was plugged into an inverter outlet, worked like a champ. So from now on, when we boondock, all we have to do is anything that's really perishable, we put in the, the small auxiliary cooler and it runs off the inverter and everybody's happy. But I still haven't figured out how to, how to uh, decipher this wiring diagram. Uh, I'll give it another shot and I'll let you know if anything changes. That's Jane. See, Jane is so pretty. Yeah. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. This is King. And this is Scout. Scout's having breakfast. And this is Little Girl. Say hi. So how are you? You got something in your hair. There you go. So pretty. Oh, good morning. Well, we'll have to say goodbye. It's been beautiful. I mentioned that um, we are coming here from um, Linwood Equestrian Center. They have a wonderful program that's a therapy, therapeutic horse riding program. Um, also, we are here as a Harvest Host guest and they really have got a wide variety of things to do. Um, again, we were able to meet with the horses this morning. It's been a little chilly, but um, also speaking of chilly, they had a fabulous spaghetti dinner, um, Southwest spaghetti dinner. <laughs> and they really um, again can treat you well it's an opportunity to, to visit and uh, also get to know the folks here um we're here at beautiful Carowinds wilderness Carowinds Camp Wilderness Campground. Nice wooded sites. Get uh, parked and check in here soon. Nice spot here at Carowinds Camp Wilderness. All settled in. Nice beautiful fall day. Hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. Bo's eating Thanksgiving leftovers. <laughs> he's about to push this pan all over the camper. And he's like, yeah, ha ha fat boy. You get down here and eat this turkey with no fingers and no hands. <laughs> You're doing all right, buddy. Some folks are already in the Christmas spirit here. Already told Maureen, do not expect to put one on top of the roof of the Airstream. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I really hope you've enjoyed this week's video. We enjoyed putting it together for you. Had a great trip. Had a wonderful stay at that harvest host. Maureen loved the horses. I think we'll do more of that in the future. So if you like this video, give us a like uh, below. Consider putting a ring on it and subscribing. And click that bell for future notifications. Until then, safe travels and we'll see you later. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season.